How are you doing? Good. How are you? How's the pandemic treating you? Uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. Pretty good. Doing all right. Let's officially start. You guys are releasing your new album in a few weeks. How are you feeling? Nervous? Excited? Um, I think when you release a record, there's a bit of both. I, I always say it's like doing a painting. So like you, you've been hiding away trying to do a painting and then you finally, you finally open the door, turn it around and everyone gets to sort of judge you on it, on your hard work. <laughs> um, but no, like, like personally, like I, I love the record. I think that it's diverse. I think that no matter if you're into sort of hardcore or metal or punk rock, I think there's something in there for everybody. Um, and I think the fact that, you know, we, we put a record out in lockdown um, and, it, you know, it's not been the most difficult thing to overcome, uh, writing a record and getting it out in, in, in these times. So, yeah, we're, we're proud of it. And, and like, yeah, love the record. think it's a strong record from us. And like I say, I think there's something in there for everybody. I will agree. I think it's one of your best works to date. So congratulations. Thank you. Thanks so uh, much. I really loved it. I think it's definitely going to be on my top five albums of the year. Yeah, thank you so much. That's awesome. You're welcome. Now, you guys last year introduced the Sleep Society, which was a yeah. platform to bring your friends who were already very close to the band even closer. How did this idea come about? Basically, I think that initially the idea was sort of birthed from our You Are We record, which was a couple of records previous to this one. We, we released our record uh, through a pledge campaign and it was like one of our one of the most successful ways that we'd released a record and it was basically stripped back and it was basically from from us guys to to the fans of the band and vice versa there was no like there was there wasn't too many middlemen and you know we didn't have to go through tons of people to get things done and you know i think that like as you sort of like musicians if you like growing up in this industry we've been doing this now for a long time we've like just encountered so many problems along the way where people aren't aren't sort of doing their jobs right and like you, you back, like bumping into so many problems. So we decided to release You Are We in that way. And like I said, it was really successful. So I think that really sort of started, started the thought process behind the Sleep Society. And I guess the Sleep Society is just more of a, like a hyped up version of, of what You Are We, the uh, pledge campaign was. I mean, for a lot of people, you know, we're running the, the Sleep Society through Patreon. Um, and Patreon's really nothing new. But I think for a lot of people, it's a side hustle. And they don't really use it as, like, the, uh, the forefront of their campaign. So that was really interesting for us. And, you know, I, I guess the general idea is just to... It allows us to sort of drop the smoke and mirrors and just address the people that really care about the band. And basically sort of... Yeah, just, just say like this is the state of the industry. This is where we're at as as, as a band and and al almost as a business as well. And you know, people are. It's not like it used to be where you don't really know what's going on. People are clued up now about the industry and people know what's going on. So for us to sort of sit there and try and be rock stars would be wrong. You know what I mean? Like, so for us, it's about getting our getting our fan base the information that that we have sharing that with everybody but then also opening the doors for other things to happen like tutorials and like the the fans of the band getting more face time and us being able to sort of address those co the core fan base um more frequently you know that these people that are that are in the sleep society are, are helping us sustain this band and and that's crucially important especially when like the industry is such a difficult time like while she sleeps is a band that's come through so many different changes within the music industry i feel like we're on the cusp of everything sort of changing so we're always sort of re reworking how we do things um and i think you know i think that's why we're still here i think if our worth eth ethic was anything less than what it is i think we'd have been crushed by by sort of the industry already and I think that happens to a lot of bands you know so it's about it's about all those components really for us and just making uh you know making it sustainable and being able to address the core fan base that's not saying that we don't appreciate any level of support no matter what it is it just means that this core fan base are sort of almost directly funding us and that kind of it allows us to be less of a clothing line if you like and, and allows us to have more headspace to be able to just create music and that's what our fans want from us so yeah 
that's kind of the whole thing in a nutshell. Um, yeah. Well, this whole thing in a nutshell is actually a great segue to my next question. Because <laughs> you guys are the best example of a band that's taking their fate into their own hands and has a clear vision for their career. Now, what has been the biggest hardship and challenge you faced while being an independent band? And what advice would you give to younger bands? It's a difficult one. I think, like, like I said, we, like as a band, we've had to overcome so many different changes within the industry, changes within ourselves and, and, and band members and, you know, change of sort of like what we like as people, individuals, the people that we're working with. So, so yeah, it's, it's been very tough at times. I think the, the advice I'd give to anyone that's sort of in an up and coming band is like almost kind of like be careful what you're signing. Um, basically you know management for the majority of the time and labels that you know they can be absolutely like necessary for bands to to reach a certain level and and like i'm not trying to slag that off at all but also you have to remember that nobody is into your band as much as you are so you know you need to you need to make that the number one thing you know like always remember that the in people in the industry aren't always your friends you know um and I think that's some of, that's kind of advice that I would tell myself, that my younger self, because it's very easy to be naive and sort of think that everyone's out for your best intentions when really they're out for their own best intentions, you know? So that's probably some advice that I'd give. And, and also, like, we get asked a lot as a band, um, how, how do you get there, you know what I mean? How can I, be in, how can I be in a rock band or how can I make it, you know, how can we get popularity or how can we make it our jobs or career and I think that the only answer to that is like how passionate you are about it you know if you if you really love what you're doing and you believe in it then you just need to work every hour of every day trying to push it out there and I think for us initially when we first when I first joined sleeps and even in my other projects like that's how I worked you know and any spare time I had just went into creating music or promoting my bands or trying to put shows together and I think you know I think that's the only way really and the new album is coming at a time when the world is still at a very critical point. How important was it for you to create new art so that people could have something to relate to and maybe ease what they may be going through? Yeah, definitely. Um, very crucial for us. I think that being able to spend time creating during the sort of COVID-19 has been, it's been very important for us. It's given us something to focus on. Um, and I think like the messages that run through this album for us, it's quite strange to know that, you know, a lot of the lyrics and a lot of the content for it was written pre lockdown, you know, like pre pandemic. So, but it's quite strange to see how some of the things that we talk about in the record sort of heavily relate to what's going on now. Um, there's always seems to be a running theme with While She Sleeps that, that like we say a few things in records lyrically and sort of poetically, if you like, and then like, a bit further down the line it all seems to sort of happen and people seem to almost like need the message that we're giving out or relate strongly to the message that we're that we're giving out and I think like to a degree we always try and hold that poetic license whereby we want it to be open to interpretation so like what what it might mean to me might be completely different to what it means to you for example but we can all relate in that same way you know um, so yeah, it's been like, it must be really tough for any bands that actually released albums pre-lockdown and they haven't been able to tour it. Up until this point, we've been very lucky to, that the schedule that we already had in place has kind of worked to the, to the COVID-19 schedule, if you like, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, it's been very important that we had, we had, um, we had time to create this. And in, in many ways, like, like I say, we're very lucky that we have the outlet and have a space in Sheffield in the UK where we can actually still make that happen and have enough space to be socially distanced and safe um but also yeah but also still able to create that and still make sure everyone like i say make sure everyone's safe um yeah so yeah it's been it's been like a bit of a roller coaster journey but like really crucial for us to be able to create in this time and and like i say the message it's funny to see how the message translates through from song to song to the situation that we're in now um yeah i want to circle back to that i have one more question to ask first okay 
uh, you're one of the bands that's very vocal and very open about mental health issues and struggles. How yeah. important is it for you to further establish the dialogue and to destigmatize mental illness? Um, yeah, I think it's something that's becoming more and more apparent in like sort of modern day society. And I feel like you know, I was raised by my mother, you know, mainly. So I didn't come from a family where it's like my dad was kind of like shut up and get on with it. You know what I mean? I was always I was always very sort of wear your heart on your sleeve. And I think that's probably where I got like my taste for like emo music and rock music back in the day came from was just that just being who I am and trying to be comfortable with that. Um, but obviously along the way as well, you sort of you, you're constantly learning so much about yourself. And I feel like for a lot of people, a lot of the time, it's not really apparent that, that, you know, the chemical imbalance might change from time to time and, you know, you feel a certain way at a certain time. So I think that no matter who you are, where you're from or what you're into, I think that it's very important that you open up and talk to people around you about however, like, doesn't really matter how you're feeling because at least if, a people, if people around you know how you feel, then they can help maybe or react or, or let you know that they're feeling a similar way. I think for us with this song, this was our main sort of, it didn't sort of happen like this overnight. I think as the songs progressed and, and Sean sort of wrote the majority of the song, he, and I felt like at the time that he wrote a song like Nervous, which is the song that we've been pushing towards mental health and, and opening that up and the awareness of that. I think he was in a really sort of dark place. So, so it kind of, it came to him quite easily to write the song. So that when the rest of the guys heard it, it was like, wow, it's like so powerful. And I think that's what drip, that's what's driven us to push it in this way. Um, and I think, you know, I think it's crucially important that people keep opening up. I personally lost a close friend of mine to suicide during the first lockdown. And I do feel like, would we be in the same situation now if he'd have been able to, or felt like he could speak to people about that? So, you know, it's been very important to me to sort of drive this message. And, you know, from putting out that, um, that message with the song Nervous, we've, it's opened up conversations between like people, like our family members and partners and like close people that you, you might never have actually discussed that with them, but just because we've brought it up in a song, then it opens it, opens it up for, comp uh, for conversation. And I think that's what it's doing across the board for While She Sleeps fans. And, you know, we've been jumping on calls with people from the Sleep Society and like just having general conversation, like no pressure, just if you want to come along and like sort of open up a little bit and just or just listen to what other people have got to say. And I think it's generally helping people sort of digest the information and figure out that like they're not on their own with how they feel. And um, so, yeah, it's crucially important. It's something that's being brought up more and more and more in, in, in the press and um, in the media. And, and I think that's a positive thing. I think that, it, um, you know, if people feel like there's a place for them to talk about, talk about how they feel, then, um, then it can only be a good thing. That's very good to hear. <laughs> uh, now, the album is full of songs that are anthems of defiance and empowerment. And people consider you as the voice of your generation. Do you ever feel that with such claims usually comes a heavy burden? to please people and to write material that stands up to their expectations. Yeah, I think naturally there's that sort of, you know, you want to you want to step up to the plate with every record that we create and at the same time every every piece of music that we write is a clean slate to try and sort of write the best thing we've ever written or or write something that we feel is important. I think that the main thing with while she sleeps is when we set out, you know, we didn't really have we didn't really outline any specific things that we wanted to achieve with the band or any sounds that we wanted to to achieve but like but like for us it was about sounding like while she sleeps and i think one of the crazy things about our band is like i don't think anyone else actually sounds like us like i've not actually heard another band that i, I go yeah they kind of sound like us or i've heard like sort of some riff styles that might sound a bit like sean but i'm yeah you know i never really hear anyone that's like vocally sounds like myself or Matt or Sean and and like uh, Sean's guitar playing really sort of helps us stand out and he doesn't really play like anyone else so we're really quite proud of sounding like no one else and having our own thing going on there um I think with the 
the message and the connotations that run through the band, like, it's just something we were always quite passionate about. When we first sort of wrote our first EP, The North Stands for Nothing, like, there was a lot of death metal flying around, and it, we actually felt like it didn't really represent who we were. We didn't want to be writing about, like, severing heads and, like, ripping people's throats out. We wanted to be talking about, like, things that, we can actually relate to and experiences that we've actually had. So that naturally took us to a bit more of a, a romantic emotional side of things, as well as wanting to write heavy music. So I think we've always collaborated those things. And I think naturally we write about sort of slightly po um, politically, but also, you know, slightly about like different relationships or things you see in the news and the media. And I think we, we try and just write from experiences that we've had. So, yeah, there's that side of things, but also, you know, what's always been important for me as a, as a writer and, and a sort of a band member, if you like, is that sense of community. Like I got into rock and metal when I was like pretty young and that was one of the main things that was always there for me was the, was the sort of metal community. I always had fun there, I've made tons of friends there, always wanted to promote shows and be around people playing music. And I think, I guess in a way, that's what we just want to create for other people. And I think that's why you get such a sense of, sort of community uh, and unity with while she sleeps is it's just that that's what we we sort of love about this industry and, and being in a band you know even even when we from when we first started out to now you know we're the sort of band that will watch the other bands play do you know what i mean we don't just play the show and that's it we're out of the venue we're, we're very much like in the thick of it and we want to meet our fans and we want to talk to people and so i think it's very important that you know we we talk about things that people can relate to. And I think, like I said before, like we, we always try and keep it open to interpretation and, you know, write lyrics in a poetic way. But, you know, as long as it's relatable and, and people like the message, then that's the important thing. Um, I think ultimately we just want to be, we personally want to be happy with what we're putting out. Um, I think it's a huge bonus that people like our band and uh, want to listen to it because I can never understand why people want to listen to me shout my head off but but um, it's really cool and it's an amazing feeling to feel like we have fans all over the world that that do relate to our message and and sort of yeah feel united with us when we play live so yeah it's, it's great and and that stuff is definitely important to us. So to lighten the mood and to start wrapping things up if while she sleeps were members of the Spice Girls, what would be your Spice names? And you have to create original names. Oh, that's tough. Because I was going to say Matt would be Ginger Spice, obviously, because, you know, he's Ginger. Yeah, no. I, I was going to be Scary Spice, because pretty scary. Um, but if I have to do original names, that's... I don't know if I can do that off the top of my head. Um, I don't know. Sav's name is Savage, so maybe he's Savage Spice. Does that work? Yes, Savage, definitely. Savage, Savage Spice. I'll be uh, Rat Spice just because it's an ongoing joke with me and my partner that I look like a rat and um, I'm a bit gross. So I'll be Rat Spice. Um, yeah, I really don't know. Um, Sean could be Feisty Spice, I guess. <laughs> He's got quite a, he can have quite a hard attitude about himself sometimes. So that's cool. And then, and then I'm just going to stick with Ginger Spice for Matt. Like that's all, yeah. that's all he's, that's a real, I need like a day to work out that question. That's tough. No, no, no. Come on. <laughs> Final question. If you could have a one minute phone conversation with a younger you, what date would you call and what would you tell yourself? Those are hard. I'd probably, I'd probably call myself at like 25 and say, chill the fuck out on drink and drugs because you, <laughs> you're going to have to have throat surgeries and you're going to do a lot of things that, you know, you regret. Um, yeah, I've kind of suffered over the years with like alcohol abuse and just just not knowing when to quit that and, uh, and taking it too far. And I think the last few years... Um, I've really had to work hard on like, l like learning vocal techniques to stop injuring my voice. And, and, you know, and I just think that if I'd have been a less heavy on the booze and a bit more knowledgeable and took it a bit more seriously when I was younger, then I probably wouldn't have been in the situations that I've been in. So I probably just tell myself that 
you know, partying hard is not the be all and end all and to, to chill out a little bit, I guess. Yes, but still, it was a learning experience for you. Now I mean, you know how to take care of your voice. Yeah, it was fun while it lasted for sure. But yeah, I need to be a bit more careful now. I've only got one voice, you know. That is true. But you also only have one leg. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> okay, we are done here. Thank you so much for your time. Hopefully, we'll get to see you guys again in Greece soon. Definitely. Definitely. Can't wait. I mean, yeah, we're in such a weird situation. But for, you know, for any of our fans that are over there in Greece listening, then thank you so much for the support. Um, it's very much appreciated. And like you say, as soon as we can, we'll be over there and uh, hopefully play a show for you guys again. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. No problem. Thanks for your time. Peace out. Stay safe.